Hello, I am Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this awesome intro. Alright, that looks pretty cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy the project files with the link in the description. Apart from that, I'd like to say that I won't be covering all the details from this tutorial on how to create that intro. I will be covering how to create the background, how to create the text and how to create the text look. So it's kind of the same, but I won't be covering how to do these small details like the particles and the flares because I already have a lot of tutorials on my channel that cover similar effects. So definitely check out my channel if you haven't already and you will be able to cover a similar effect. So without further ado let's fire up Adobe After Effects and get started. Alright here we are in Adobe After Effects. So the first thing that we'll do is go to a composition, new composition, make this full HD and 5 seconds long uh, at 30 FPS and then I will change this to main comp so this is our main comp and I will click OK. Right click new and we'll create a new solid layer and rename this to background. This will represent our background of course. And I will pick like a brownish kind of color, something like this. Click OK and OK. And then I will hold Ctrl and press D on the keyboard to duplicate that solid. And we'll go to layer, solid settings and change this to a bright kind of orange tone like so. Click OK and new and duplicate it again. Go again to layer, solid settings and change it to a bright yellowish kind of color. Something like this. Click OK and OK again. And now what we can do is go to our mask tool, go to the ellipse tool and we'll draw in the middle of our screen right here a circle. So I'm holding Ctrl and Shift to make a perfect sphere like so. And I press F on the keyboard. Actually perfect circle, not sphere. It's not 3D. And then I will feather this out here and just do the same thing for the orange part and just make it a little bit bigger and press F on the keyboard again and feather it out even more like so. Maybe go to MM. So if you tap M twice, uh, you're going to get all the settings for your mask and you can go into the mask expansion and just lower this down a little bit until you get something that you like. Maybe duplicate that background once more and maybe expand it again right here. And then you go back to the solid settings and change it to a darker kind of orange right here like so press F on the keyboard and feather it out by a nice amount right here and we're going to get like a nice gradient look to it so as you can see right here it's starting to look pretty nice uh, of course you'll have to tweak it until you get something perfect uh, but this is really going to uh, give you a nice color kind of a variation you can duplicate it once more here maybe feather it a bit less mask expansion, play around with everything until you get these nice bright spots in the center. Okay, so once you have something like this, you can hold on Control A and so once you have something like this, just click on one of the layers, hold Ctrl and press A on the keyboard and just toggle these down so you have a stack of background layers right here. And we can go into color settings and change this to a 32 bits per channel, click OK and you're going to get a lot more information in your color as you can see right here. Then I will right click new adjustment layer and on that adjustment layer I will apply an effect noise and grain right here and add some noise to it and just set it at 1% and that's just going to fix the banding so if you don't have noise you're going to see a bit of banding uh, probably you'll see um, banding even at this point but I'm not seeing any banding it's just um, because of YouTube's compression um, but that way you can get some really nice interesting backgrounds that are uh, a little bit different than most uh, backgrounds so you can right click new and add another fractal noise to uh, on the top of everything actually just click OK, put it below the adjustment layer with the noise and go to Effect, Noise and Grain and apply the Fractal Noise type to it. Go to the Fractal Type, change it to a Progressive and go into the Transform and just scale it up a little bit. And right now we have something like this. We can take down the brightness, maybe invert it, uh, see what you want to work with. Uh, depends a little bit on the style you want to go for. Uh, but just kind of drag it down, go to Toggle the Switches 
until you see the mode right here and change it to an overlay. And right now you'll see something like this. Press T on the keyboard and just lower the values for your fractal noise like so. And you're going to see that you have some detail in the background and of course you can lower the complexity right here to something like two and just scale it up even more so we have something like this. Maybe play with the contrast a little bit. And there we go. So now we have some kind of um, variation in our background. Actually, we can keep this pretty low so we get something like this. We can duplicate that fractal noise type if you want. Go into the transform and make it smaller this time. So um, by doing that, you're going to get different kind of variations and it's going to look a little bit better. So this is kind of one of my techniques that I sometimes use to do my backgrounds. It's just uh, playing around with all these kind of layers to get interesting backgrounds and you can add like a new adjustment layer on top of everything and rename this to vignette and then we're going to pick our ellipse tool right here and just draw a ellipse like so and then just change this to a subtract and go to effect color correction curves and just drag down these curves and then press F on the keyboard to feather it out and now we have a darker kind of edge right here so and that you can do as well. And now we have a pretty interesting background. Okay, so we have the background. I will just select all my layers. You go to layer pre-compose, layer pre-compose, and I will rename this to background like so, click okay. And now we can create a new composition and rename this to title sequence and click okay. In this title sequence, I will uh, change my composition settings to a kind of grayish kind of background like so, because we are going to work with a black text and we want to see our text against our background, so a black background won't work. I will click right over here and just write something like tolerated. And right here we have Lado Bolt, this is the font that I'm using, and I will go to align and just center out my text like so. Now right click on your layer right here and go to layer styles and add a gradient overlay to your text and you're going to get something like this. Open up the layer styles, a gradient overlay, edit a gradient and right here I want to change my black color to a kind of uh, dark gray color and my white color to an even darker kind of color, not black uh, but just kind of close to black something like this and you can also offset this a little bit and make another one to make it brighter a little bit and that way you're going to get some kind of 3D feel uh, to your text maybe this is a little bit too bright uh, just play around very softly and now we have a text like this okay so what I will do now is go to animate and I will enable per character 3D and that's uh, going to give each of my characters its own kind of um, yeah I can animate it my um, yeah, separately, uh, let's say, and then I will go to animate and animate my position. And right here I have my position, I will create a new keyframe right here and offset that keyframe to something like 60 frames, which means 2 seconds, right over here. And then I will just animate my Z position right here, so I will hold shift and drag down and now we'll have some kind of animation like this. You can open the range selector, uh, we shouldn't touch this, but we can go into advanced and right here we can do some really cool stuff. Instead of the shape to square, we'll change it to round and now you're going to get this kind of animation that your text on the outside is going to appear first and then your center text and you can do a lot of cool things so you can definitely uh, maybe just drag it in a little bit more, uh, but you can do a lot of cool things like uh, ease high and that way you're going to get like different kind of results. So with the amount you can also go negative so it actually starts inwards and then comes out like so um, let's let's keep it at 100 so now you have an animation like this you can also change this to, to subtract and that way it's going to appear like this also pretty cool um, but for this kind of tutorial I'm going to um, keep it at add now my text is flying in like so my text isn't completely gone so I will just drag this away until my text is completely gone out of my uh, composition. Now it's flying in like so. We'll click on the last keyframe right here, right click, enable, uh, keyframe assistance, easy ease, and that's going to soften our animation a little bit. So we get something like this, pretty cool. Click on your text again, so nothing else is selected. Go to animate right here, and now we're going to animate our rotation. 
click on the rotation and again at the last frame right here set the exact same position as our position create three new keyframes for our rotation go to the beginning and just change this all to something like 90 and let's see what this is doing to our text now we have something like this and maybe 90 is a little bit too much so we'll change it to like 45 45 45 and if you're going to drag it in, you're going to see something odd. Right now, we have our anchor point starting right here. So if we rotate our text, it's actually rotating along this axis right here. And we want to fix that. So actually, very simply, go to more options right here. And for the character, uh, we're going to change our grouping alignment. And if you're going to increase that, you're going to see that right here. We can keep it at zero because that's the center of our text. We have to play with the second value. And if you bring this down, you're going to see this kind of cross. And now it's completely centered to my text. And you're going to see that now my text actually rotates on the exact same um, position that I actually want it to be. Also change this to a round and now you have some kind of different animation right here. So my final values are for the X 60, Y 60 and Z 25. And now I have an animation like this, which is kind of clean, I suppose. Okay, so this is exactly what we're trying to get. Uh, so I'm going to click on my text, close everything down and just duplicate my text now, put this below. And this text, I'm going to press S on the keyboard and just go to the final position so we don't have any animation going on. And for the scale right here, I'm going to uncheck my um, constraint proportions. And for the X, I'm going to change this to 99. And what that's going to do, make sure that your text actually is centered. So uh, just do that first and then go for for the scale and just set this at 99 and now if we're going to open up our text and go to the text uh, properties so the layer styles gradient overlay edit gradient now we want to change it up a little bit so right here I want to make it pretty dark but then right away I want to make it pretty bright here so we get something like this right here even brighter and maybe right here I want it to be dark again maybe another bright spot. So as you can see, you can play around with all these settings and get some pretty nice results. Click OK and then click away. And now we're going to notice that we have some kind of 3D feel to it. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually going to darken these up a little bit more so they're not exaggerated like so. Click OK. And now we have a nice clean 3D text like so. It looks pretty neat. So we have our text animation and actually and now we have something like this. So I'll go back to my main composition, go to properties, and I'm going to add my tile sequence right here. And now we'll have this kind of animation. Then we can right click new adjustment layer. And right here, I'm going to add a color correction tint to it and just change it to 25. So we have a softer background. And for the effect color correction curves uh, for some contrast into my text and my background. So we get something like this and I think this looks pretty cool actually so uh, let's do a preview okay so that's pretty cool um, I will add another adjustment layer actually and this is going to be my optics and if I go to effects and presets right here I'll just look for optic compensation and just add that to that adjustment layer and right here I will increase my value do something rather big and do go to the beginning of your timeline and just click on the reverse lens distortion, increase it a little bit more, click on the stopwatch right here and go again to 60 frames, which means two seconds and just set this back to zero. And now we have this kind of animation that it really giving the ID that it's 3D. So uh, looks pretty cool right here. Actually, I want to offset my keyframe a little bit. So go to U, uh, press U on the keyboard and then just drag in this a little bit. So we get it a little bit longer. Maybe we can drag this in a little bit and you're going to notice this zoom effect. We also want to enable our motion blur for the composition of the tile sequence. Go into the tile sequence, toggle the switches and enable motion blur for the text itself. And then also for the composition in the main comp right here. Now you're going to get this motion blur for your text, which is also going to help, of course, with the, um, yeah, with your result. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make my title sequence and my background a 3D layer and I'm going to set my background actually in a position of 5000 NZ as you can see right here. I'm going to increase the size like so. For my title sequence I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to duplicate my title sequence and actually go to P 
for the position and I'm going to increase, I'm going to zoom in here, I'm going to increase my Z a little bit and that way we're going to get this kind of 3D feel in our text like so, which looks pretty cool actually. So right here you can see that you really get some 3D text and if it's closer to the camera you're going to notice that it's uh, yeah, looking like a real 3D text and we don't need any 3D software to do it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so we have this kind of result right now. And there we go, we have a pretty cool 3D fly-in intro like so. And of course you can tweak all the settings so it actually comes in a little bit later right here and all that kind of stuff. That's all in the animation kind of part. And then apart from that I just added some particles in the background, added a flare right here to my text. And that's basically it. Another thing that I've done is just added an adjustment layer on top of everything. And just added a soft layer of perfect glow. So I will apply this to my adjustment layer and just uh, decrease the intensity right right here so I will keep it pretty low and then for the threshold here I'm going to increase it and increase it right here I said this is something like 0 0.1 0 0.01 so this is with the glow and without the glow. The glow adds up a little bit in the text, kind of a reflection uh, thing. So just keep it very low, but you can get some decent results with your glow as well. So perfect glow, you can download that on our website for free at the freebies page. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.